Hello, my name is uh, Nato Flores, and uh, I've been asked to be a guest speaker for you for today. Uh, I want to ask Frank to please make sure he edits as much of this out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I uh, am with a company called Tower General Contractors. We have been in business since uh, 1985. We're the uh, largest uh, minority-owned uh, general contracting firm in the county of Los Angeles. We have uh, <clears throat> currently over uh, 110 million dollars in uh, contracts backlog. Uh, we have uh, about 43 direct employees. Uh, most of them are managers uh, and assistants. And then we, of course, employ hundreds of people through our subcontractors indirectly. Um, our uh, our areas of expertise are we do a lot of work in hospitals. Uh, we do highly technical work, I like to call it. Uh, we're going to be uh, reconstructing the theme building at Los Angeles International Airport. That's the building with the arches. Uh, we're going to be building the new emergency department expansion at uh, Huntington Hospital. Um, and we're going to be building the new Labor's International uh, Local 300 uh, headquarters in LA. Uh, so those are some of the projects that we do. Um, the, the subject that I wanted to talk about was the advantages and importance of uh, getting more of our young people into uh, technical fields, uh, engineering, architecture, those kind of things. And I may uh, interchange them, I'll call them engineering, I'll call them architecture, I'll call them technical. But basically, uh, uh, it's really important that we uh, talk to our young people to get into that. I, um, Sometimes when I, when I speak to a young person, I ask them, you know, if they're going to go to college, and I ask them, you know, what they're going to go into, and it's uh, usually a non-technical field for the most part. And I've asked them if they, you know, have considered this, and uh, they usually tell me they're not good at math, uh, that they're afraid of math. That, uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about my background so that um, uh, you'll understand where I come from and uh, why a fear of math or a fear of those kind of things really is, is unfounded for most of us that have, uh, you know, unless we have a, a mental disability, we probably can get through almost any, anything. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I, I was born in Mexico. I was born in a small town called Valparaiso, Mexico, in uh, the state of Zacatecas. Um, I came here twice, once when I was five and then once again when I was seven. and. Um, what happened to me was my father was a uh, was sent to the United States by my grandfather to uh, because he was a lot of trouble for my grandfather basically mm -hmm. sent him up here to work and he worked in the fields he was a uh, a grape picker up in Fresno he then came down to Los Angeles and got into the construction industry and um, not long after that uh, he started building his own buildings his own small apartment buildings houses and things like that. Anyway, he, he made quite a bit of money doing that, that he uh, pretty much got out of the construction industry, I'm thinking, when he was maybe 35 or so. And uh, basically has been a real estate investor all throughout that time. Um, but um, <clears throat> myself, I, uh, I was uh, living with my grandparents in Mexico while my dad was here. And uh, I became a lot of trouble for them also. I, uh, I think I told some of you my little story, but uh, mm -hmm. my father had to come and get me, basically. So he came down to Mexico once and uh, told me that I was going to visit my aunt in the city of Zacatecas. Mm -hmm. uh, we got in the car very early in the morning, because he knew that I didn't want to come here. And uh, the sun wasn't up yet, so we started driving. And, uh, then all the, and I had been to the city of Zacatecas with my uh, aunt. We started driving and I noticed that the sun wasn't coming up in the right direction. I started seeing the mountains of Durango, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to Mexico, but they're very high mountains. So I knew that uh, we weren't going in the right direction and we kind of figured what was happening. So I fought with them all the way to the border. I was so tired when we got to uh, Tijuana that uh, I don't even remember crossing the border. But anyway, that's how I got here. I, uh, <clears throat> when I got here, I was probably in the second grade. and. Uh, I had a very difficult time learning how to speak, uh, or I'm sorry, not how to speak, but really how to read English. I knew how to read Spanish already, but uh, for some reason, because I knew Spanish, I couldn't get to reading English. And I got to third grade, I was about to be sent to uh, one of the um, special ed classes, I'm sure we all knew about those. When we were young, that's where they sent you if you couldn't uh, keep up with the rest of the class. 
Luckily, my third grade teacher, Miss Verhoff, heard me arguing with another kid about uh, whether I could read or not read. I basically told him, well, you know, I can read Spanish and you can't read it. So she heard me say that. She, she came to me and she said, can you actually read uh, Spanish? I said, yes. She said, well, I want you to go home and talk to your mother and tell her that you're going to spend every day with me after school for about an hour, an hour and a half until you learn English. So I told my stepmother that. Uh, I came back the next day and I was with this teacher for about a month and a half to two months. And what she did was she read a book ahead of me and I just repeated what she had read and she had me reading about a month and a half. After that, this particular teacher kept in touch with me. She sent me books throughout uh, even my college years. She sent books mm -hmm. to me. So she was a really big influence on me. Um, I went through high school and uh, my plan at that time was uh, to graduate from high school and start a concrete construction company. I wasn't going to go to college. But what happened was I took a, a class at Rockwell International in, um, in Downey, California. And that's, that was a big aerospace facility. That's where they designed the space shuttles before that they had designed the uh, Apollo uh, rockets and the Apollo space capsules basically there. So these classes were taught by the engineers after work hours. And, Kids from the local communities would come there and take classes. They have, you know, photography, writing classes, um, film classes. I took an introduction to engineering. I always liked building things. You know, I had shop classes in high school, and I liked designing what I was going to build and then building it. Um, so I did well in that class, and they gave me a, a scholarship. So I went to my counselor the next day, and I said, hey, I got this scholarship, and I think I want to go to college and see what it's like. You know, I want to go spend the money and have fun. <laughs> So uh, he said, well, you know, you got to take the SAT. This is one, this is my last semester in, in high school. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's that? <laughs> I had no idea what that was. <laughs> so I went and I took the test, uh, and I got into uh, Cal Poly San Luis and Cal Poly Pomona. And for whatever reason, I chose Pomona because it was closer to my house. Uh, I don't know why I did that, because everybody wants to get away from their house now. You know, my son is all the way across the country. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Anyway, I, um, I started in the engineering program at Cal Poly Pomona, and uh, before I got there, though, I had run into my math teacher from high school, Mr. Ackerman, and he saw me, he said, I hear you're going to college, Flores. I said, yeah. And he said, well, what are you taking? I said, well, engineering. And he looked at me sideways, and he said, <laughs> wait a minute, you know, you've got to have a lot of math for that. Well, up to that point, I had had Algebra one, Algebra two, and I barely understood them. Um, and I got to college. And I look at the curriculum, and it's wall-to-wall -wall math for the first three years, basically. Um, so I, uh, I started, and uh, what I did is I concentrated on my studies. I read a lot. Uh, the fact that I could read, when uh, Mrs. Verhoff taught me how to read, I became a, a very avid reader. I, had, I, I read hundreds of, probably thousands of books. I can't remember now. But uh, the fact that I could read and concentrate really got me through that. I also wasn't shy about asking help from my fellow uh, students or my teachers who were, you know, who had done better than I had in high school. Anyway, I was able to get through an engineering curriculum. So when I hear students say that, you know, they're not good at math and that's why they're not going into there, um, I really don't take that as an excuse because if I could get through it, anybody <laughs> can believe me. Um, they also, uh, I hear them say it's boring that we're nerds, you know. Well, you know, we might be. <laughs> because but I guess if you define a nerd a guy that's or, or a person that's passionate about what they do, then you know I'm guilty of that. I really love my job. I like what I do. I never feel like I go to work. Um, so I really get into it. I, I run a construction company now, but uh, the fact that I had an engineering degree has really helped me run this company. Like I, I explained to you, we're doing some very highly technical projects, and the fact that uh, that I can understand uh, there's a language of engineering. There's a language, uh, there's a technical language. So when Huntsman Chemicals, who's one of our clients, calls me,